Stan Jabalisco here to talk a little bit about electromagnetic shielding. Now in a video just earlier today, June 30th, 2014, uh, I made a video about electrostatic shielding. Now I'd like to talk about electromagnetic shielding. The two are sometimes confused, but they are considerably different. Uh, electrostatic shielding Electrostatic shielding refers to shielding that uh, prevents the passage of electric lines of flux but allows magnetic lines of flux to go through. Whereas electromagnetic shielding blocks the electric and the magnetic lines of flux so that in effect it will block an electromagnetic field entirely. Electrostatic shielding will not completely block an electromagnetic field, but electromagnetic shielding will. And the simplest example I can provide for you is a popular antenna with amateur radio operators, the half-wave dipole antenna fed at the center with a device called a ballon, which transforms this balanced load into an unbalanced uh, paradigm, you might say, so that you can feed this antenna with coaxial cable. Now, coaxial cable, as you may know, if you look at a cross-section of this stuff, you will see an outer conductor that's shaped like a tubular braid of wire. Then you'll find dielectric material, such as polyethylene plastic, inside of that braid and then running right down the center of that polyethylene, usually a foamed polyethylene plastic, you will find a center conductor. So the center conductor is here and the braid is here and that braid acts as an electromagnetic or EM shield when the coax is properly operating. So your signal may come into your dipole antenna, travel down this coaxial cable in the form of an electromagnetic field. But because this cable has electromagnetic shielding, it will keep that electromagnetic field inside of the cable. That is, it will confine it to the interior. This green blob here, the dielectric material, will contain the electromagnetic field and it won't leak out. Similarly, if you transmit with your radio, for example, in a ham radio transmitter, you send your electromagnetic field down this cable. It stays inside the cable because of this shield. This electromagnetic shielding gets to the ballon transformer, which transforms that unbalanced feed line situation into the balanced uh, configuration appropriate for the antenna. That's probably a, that's a very common example of electromagnetic shielding in amateur radio applications or shortwave listening applications. Now, electromagnetic shielding can serve a whole variety of purposes besides just allowing a transmission line to work properly. For example, suppose that you want to keep electromagnetic fields entirely out of a room in your house. You might, uh, for example, want to store your... Well, let's just say that you have things like smartphones, you have things like, oh, thumb drives, hard drives. You're concerned about the possibility of an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, damaging uh, the data on your drives. Say you have a little thumb drive here, TD, a little external hard drive here. HD, maybe even your entire tablet device, tablet 
device, all sorts of little devices, and you build a, a metal box, a completely enclosed metal box, uh, it, so that you can lock it shut, and it's made out of, say, steel, which is a ferromagnetic material and also a good conductor of electricity. And then you ground this whole thing. You put your stuff in there and it's going to form an electromagnetic shield. So that electromagnetic pulse, the sun goes wild. Or, well, you know, they talk about exploding bombs and things like that. That's probably an unlikely scenario, although it would produce this type of pulse if it was a big hydrogen explosive device or something like that set off high above the surface. But the most common causes of electromagnetic pulses that we have to worry about are the solar flare and also lightning. If lightning should happen to strike a power line right outside your house, it could set up an electromagnetic pulse that could actually damage data on some of your equipment. I've never observed that effect myself, although I have certainly observed what they call a surge or a transient. But that's an entirely different situation than an electromagnetic pulse. This electromagnetic pulse sets up a powerful electromagnetic field over a wide band of radio frequencies and it's so powerful that it can sometimes affect data on things like external hard drives, thumb drives, or tablet devices. It won't affect a CD, uh, a CDR, you know those little uh, plastic discs? A CDR Electromagnetic pulse will not affect the data on one of those, but it might affect the data on these other things. But you put all that into this box. Now, most people don't bother with stuff like that, uh, much less shield an entire room of their house. Uh, but I've heard of people attempting to electromagnetically shield things like their global positioning system so that people can't locate them things like that. I don't, uh, I don't know about that myself. My vehicle doesn't have such a thing. But that's the difference. Electromagnetic shielding completely blocks electromagnetic fields. So all of these magnetic and electric lines of flux can't get inside of a box with electromagnetic shielding. If you have electrostatic shielding in contrast, it will block out the electric lines of flux, but the magnetic fields can still penetrate and would still damage your device. In order to ensure that you have electromagnetic shielding in a box like this, it has to be a completely enclosed steel box. That is to say, no gaps in it or anything. It might be made of wire mesh, but a very fine wire mesh, but it has to be ideally ferromagnetic substance like steel. Um, you've heard of these kinds of little sleeves that you can put your credit cards and things like that in? Electromagnetic shielding uh, sleeves like little envelopes. You put your credit card inside of there and then when somebody walks by you with a transponder in a store in a crowded uh, area and brushes up against you and tries to read the data off your magnetic strips and your little credit cards and driver license and all that. They won't be able to do it if you have electromagnetic shielding in your wallet. And they actually sell stuff like this. They actually sell stuff like that. Another thing you can do though is to just keep all your cash and your credit cards and everything in one of those little uh, mint boxes, you know, those little metal mint boxes. Just do away with the mints, however you may feel like doing it, and put your stuff in one of those, as long as it's a ferromagnetic, like stainless steel box. That's electromagnetic shielding. I am Stan Gibalisco, and I am signing off for now, saying best regards, and so long.